Hey you guys, greetings from sunny Los Angeles. Um, I have received a few requests from fellow bass players to talk about using the Fractal AX8 on bass. Um, and so I, I thought I'd make a little video and talk about it. Um, I've been using it for a good number of years now. Uh, it's been a really, really useful tool. Um, something that was designed mainly for guitar players. Obviously, I don't know a lot of bass players who, uh, who use it. Um, I know there are a few out there, so I thought this might be uh, helpful. Um, I think I should start by saying that I use it as a, as a pretty subtle tone shaping tool. It's capable of pretty much anything that you can think of, you know, the, the craziest effects and, and anything like that. I don't really use it like that. I would say that I use it as almost like a preamp, a little bit of EQ, a little bit of uh, bass amp modeling thrown in, and that's it. It's, it's uh, you know, and I'll show you in a second. I have, a, you know, the typical preset that I use is, is pretty, pretty simple, um, but uh, really, really works for me. Um, first of all, this is my Oliva Capolo four-string jazz bass. Jimmy Capolo made this for me uh, about 15 years ago, and it's been a, an amazing workhorse of a bass. Uh, it can do a lot of different things and very much a you know, great all-around bass. So I thought that, that would be a, a, a good way to show what this thing can do. Um, let's dive right in. Um, so right here is a typical preset that I use. Um, Basically, what's going on is this. So, you know, you've got your four lanes here, uh, your four stereo signal paths. Um, this one right here, this third one, is is basically my main uh, direct signal. Um, the, the reason I want I started using the, the AX8 it sort of came from uh, studio concepts, which, you know, like basically when you're, when you're mixing a track um, a lot of times for bass, uh, a good idea is to use your direct signal and then mix it in with a uh, bass amp mic signal. Um, those two tend to work really well together and so I thought why not try that uh, live. And so that's kind of the concept here. Um, so this signal path right here is my uh, direct signal. Um, there's only one thing going on here which is like, which is uh, just a paramet parametric EQ. Um, Make sure this all works. There you go. Um, so without it, just a direct signal. Um, sounds pretty much exactly the same as uh, you know plugging this bass straight into a direct box and send it, sending it to the front of the house. Uh, no, no real difference there at all. Um, and it sounds good, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, and then I just do a couple things to kind of beef things up. Uh, again, this is the EQ. If I play it without it, there's just a little bump that I have. I'll turn it on in the, I guess, the lower 40s, what I have it at, yeah, 42 hertz uh, by about 5 dB. It's just a little bump. It's the kind of thing that you, uh, you know, feel more than, than here. Uh, just nice and beefy. Um, these blocks right here, this filter block and this volume block, uh, these are just on-off switches essentially. Um, I like to have uh, the option of turning, you know, different parts of my signal path on and off just to hear uh, what else I have going on. And so this one right here, if I turn it off, you don't hear anything. Um, and that is so I can hear what's going on in this lane. And let's talk about that. So this is this is where the you know the bass amp uh, signal comes in. Um, I'll turn it on. So this is just a, a SVT type uh, bass. Um, there aren't a lot of bass um, amp models in the AX8. Um, this happens to be a good one. I like it. it sounds good. It's you know just modeled on an Ampic SVT. 
Um, the settings are, are pretty stock. I think I have the input the input drive here is at uh, six and a half, which gives you just a, a hint of, of overdrive. If I hit it really hard, you can kind of hear that, that uh, gain stage kicking in. Um, and then the cabinet, uh, I tend to kind of swap these out a lot just to like try try some different things. Right now, it's a it's a one fifteen, which uh, I feel plays well with when uh, combined with that direct signal. Um, uh, the level on it is pretty low. I have it at minus eighteen dB, and again, the reason being that I needed to blend it well with the direct signal. The direct signal is kind of like unity gain, you know what I mean? What you would expect from a bass going straight into a direct box. Um, so overall this this preset, and I'll share it with you guys um, on the, you know, on the uh, fractal forums, um, the the level of my of my preset is is lower than what you would typically see in a, uh, in a you know factory preset. Um, the one of the reasons I do that is I'm sending a signal to my stage amp and I don't want to you know blow that thing up. Um, and also what I'm sending to the house again is is roughly comparable to what they would see out of just a bass guitar. Um, so back to this, um, if I turn the amp signal off again and the direct signal on, again, just direct. And then mixed in with the amp signal. It's just nice and beefy. When it's just the direct signal, it sounds good, but I feel like sometimes on a stage, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, it's just a little too um, clean and clinical, perhaps. And mixed in with the amp. Sounds good. I like it. Uh, sound people love it. Uh, I can tell you that. I, I, I haven't played a gig in the last couple of years where, you know, the, where the, the sound guy or girl uh, wasn't ecstatic about w what they were getting from me. It's just a, just a nice, big, beefy signal. And, um, you know, who doesn't like a nice, big, and beefy signal? Um, I should talk about this little thing right here, the effects loop. Uh, this is basically the uh, second output out of the X8. Uh, it goes straight to my stage amp. Um, and it's th that is just for, for, you know, for monitoring for, you know, our sound on stage. It's not, you know, that amp isn't mic'd or anything like that. Um, and the reason I have it set up like this is, as you can see here, the direct signal goes to my stage amp. Um, and the amp and cap signal does not, for very obvious reasons. You don't need a simulation of a bass amp and bass cabinet going to an actual bass amp and bass cabinet. That would be silly. Um, what I do have going to it is this, uh, which is just a drive pedal. Um, and, you know, every once in a while you want a little dirt on it. Um, I, I want that dirt pedal to go into the, you know, amp and cab, the fractal ones that go to the house. Um, I don't want my drive pedal to go into my direct signal, uh, just cause, you know, to me that sounds kind of harsh and unpleasant. Um, but I do want that drive pedal to go to my stage amp, which is, you know, typically a, uh, a tube amp. It's usually actually like a backlined SVT. Um, so that's why I have it set up in the way that I do. Um, and I can show you what that sounds like. So this is without, picked up a pick real quick. drive pedal as you 
as you can uh, tell here, it's the eternal <clears throat> love model, which uh, I really like. It's it's uh, kind of a tube screamer type of pedal, um, but it retains the low end a little better. Uh, and I typically have the drive setting at about you know 12 o'clock, and then the mix. Um, sometimes I go full 100% uh, with this one. Uh, again, about about 12 o'clock, meaning uh, uh, half. Uh, um, pass through and half pedal. I'd like to kick that in, and depending on the style of music, uh, you know, often that's not needed. So I'll turn it off for now. Um, I think that sort of covers the uh, the the basic tone that I that I uh, use. Um, there's one other thing that I have in here, and it's really the only effect that I use with any sort of consistency, and that's an octaver. Um, and as you can see right here, I have it on a separate track. Uh, it goes into my direct signal. Uh, uh, it also goes to my stage amp, um, and that's about it. Um, I use the ring modulator as an octaver, and th I think that's a tip that I picked up from one of the uh, Fractal Forum users. Um, I like it better than the um, uh, pitch block uh, octave divider, um, which to me sounds very much like, like proper digital pitch shifting. There's always a little bit of lag to it. It sounds a little too... Um, uh, distant and, and separate from from what I want it to be. The 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 ring modulator as an octaver has kind of like that synthy uh, feel that like a, a Boss OC2 uh, would have, and I really like that. So this is what it sounds like here. I'll uh, I'll play it by itself. I'm gonna turn this one off. No signal, and then if I turn this one on. Uh, very kind of rubbery and synthy, and uh, it doesn't sound like much all by itself, but if I mix it in with a direct signal... Tracks great, um, kind of like, you know, sits right in there with the direct signal. Um, it even... It, it tracks well, like all the way down here. Maybe not very low notes, but I probably wouldn't use it down there anyway. Um, and I'll show you the settings here. So basically what you do is uh, instantiate a ring modulator, turn on the track button, which... Uh, uh, ensures that it you know tracks your your pitch and your playing. Um, the frequency multiplier has to be set to uh, 0 0.5, um, which you know uh, makes it go an octave lower. Um, and then the rest doesn't really matter. The frequency doesn't matter where you set that. Um, and then I put an EQ after it. And the EQ basically, as you can see right here, it, it just boosts uh, the lows and then uh, anything uh, 1K and up is turned all the way down. Um, if I turn that off, you can kind of like tell that it's a ring modulator. It's a cool sound, um, but you know, generally speaking, if I turn this on, it almost has kind of like a like a, a bass synth quality to it. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Um, 
me turn this off. Um, so again, um, just wanted to stress that that I'm not uh, you know doing anything crazy with this. The, the concepts are all all very simple. Um, and uh, but but it's been a really useful tool. And then every once in a while, when you want something crazy like just a you know insane overdrive or something like that, I you know I'll, I'll throw in like a, a uh, like a marshal in there or something like that, just to just to do something completely nuts. Um, and it's really really great at that. It's it's like the best you know distortion box that you could ever uh, uh, wish for. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Um, there's a few other things that I do that are a little more esoteric and crazy, and maybe I'll talk about those in a different video, but I think this is a good place to leave, uh, leave it here. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to hit me up, and um, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.